why is it important for you to keep working so hard um, and continue on? I know that's like, it's, it kind of, I know personally from, from living with you, it, you're, you're conflicted with that, right? So you want to spend time with children, but also you want to work for the future. How do you balance that? What c- keeps me going is the fact that I like it. I stayed home with Ben when he was little and I was unhappy. I thought that I would be the type of mom who would want to have children and keep them at home until they were four and send them to VPK and then on to kindergarten. And I didn't like it. I and it's wonderful and honorable. And honestly, staying at home is harder than going to work. I don't care what anybody says. It requires so much more patience. Um, and I respect every stay at home mom, but it was not a good fit for me. I wanted to be out in the world, talking to other people, doing business things, earning money. I didn't wanna be with my kids 24 seven with no breaks from them. I like missing them a little bit, you know? Okay, so welcome back to the Beyond the Sale podcast. And today I'm so excited we have we have a fantastic guest for us um, here, and we have Rachel Carroll, my partner in crime, the integrator of our business, um, the director of operations, and I'm so excited to have her on here today and share with her, share her role in the, the growing our business. Um, and I think that she's going to really be able to add value to anybody looking to grow their business, someone who works with their spouse, somebody who... Um, what's divide and conquer so um thanks for joining us rachel yeah thanks for having me i'm very honored <laughs> yeah, yeah great um okay so just getting started i i wanted to obviously introduce you uh maybe you can explain a little bit more about who you are from a personal standpoint as well as your role within the carol home team absolutely i'd be happy to um so obviously i am your wife Uh, We are life partners and business partners, and um, I'm a mother to two boys. Uh, Sam is one and a half, and Ben is almost five next month. So I'm very busy in that regard as a mom right now. It's a busy time of life. And um, yes, I am your partner at the Carroll Home Team. Uh, I oversee all of the operations. I help build the business to be what it is today. I do some coaching and sales training as well for our agents. And I'm really just here um, as like the integrator making stuff happen and pushing everything forward. Uh, I am also an investor alongside you. So we may, we wear many hats. Um, so. Yes, yeah. you sure do. Uh, and and you, you do so much with regards to just the details, right? Yeah, a lot of detail work. A lot of times, us, us salespeople, we were we're we're not detailed oriented. So, but yeah, so it really yeah. pick up the pieces there. So let's go ahead and, and start with like not everybody understands what that term integrator. Where did we find the term integrator? Where did it come from? Uh, what does it mean? Um, just maybe in layman's terms, and really, how do you see yourself in the role of the integrator? At, as well as um, your role on the team and the person that does what you do. Model, um, there is somebody that's called an integrator. So it usually works alongside of a visionary, which typically is somebody more like yourself, who's like a driver, big thinker, like huge thinker outside of the box person um, coming up with the new ideas. And the integrator is somebody who complements that person and really takes all of that and those ideas um, and packages them or assesses them and scraps them or whatever. Like we're the organizer of the multitude of ideas. And the integrator is also the person who um, just like handles the organization of things, but also the implementation of things, the systems and the processes, the oversight of people, things like that. So it's like the gears inside of the um, inside of the machine. Yeah, I would agree with that, right? So somebody that is the partner, it's like the yin and yang <laughs> of the business partner relationship. Yeah. Um, somebody, somebody who has, obviously you have the ideas and then 
somebody who's able to take them and implement the ideas, right? And the yep. and integrate the ideas. So cool. Yeah. I, and um, how did you know, I guess, leading to the next question, how did you know that you were best suited for that position? When did you know? How did you find out? Um, how did that all work out? Yeah. So obviously it's always been a progression. Um, in the course of us working together, I feel like I've always taken this kind of supportive role where if something needs to be done or there's a problem that needs to be fixed or there's a hole that needs to be plugged, I'm kind of that person who just always said like, I can do it. I can do it. I'll do it. I'll, I'll figure it out. Right. And, um, not taking anything away from you, but it just cuts kind of how we fit. Right. You're like blazing the trail. You're like, this is the trail. And we're like, these are the problems. And I'm kind of always been that person's like, these are some things that I can fix, or I can do this position, or we need a transaction coordinator. I can learn it and do it. We need a buyer's agent now. Well, I can learn it and do it. And we'll hire the transaction coordinator. So I've always been like on this evolution of different like job tasks, roles. And so I just kind of happened into it as we built the team, right? So like delegate and elevate is almost what we did, not even really by choice, kind of by accident accident and necessity. So that's really how it came to be this integrator role. And at some point in time along the way, you and I really kind of decided that I'm a good, I'm a good organize, organizer. I'm a great like puzzle fixer like I'm a good puzzler I actually love to do puzzles in real life and I love putting the pieces together and solving the puzzle and I was really strong in that and strong at building systems out of things and building workflows out of things and saying all right let's get some order here I just had an affinity towards it and um, I think that's where I ended up just nestling and settling in. And, and we you know, we had a conversation recently and this was might be so apparent, but it just kind of was my aha moment. It's like the supporter, right? The person that supports the vision, someone who supports yeah. the business. And like you were mentioning always, it's like we would have different, you know, visions and different things that we wanted to do. And you were always like, I'll do it. I could figure it out. I'll take it on. And you would just support the business. Or sometimes I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but, right, but which yeah. is which is also like as we learned part of it, yeah. right? So saying like, yeah, that's a great idea, but not now. Yeah, or nope, let's not let's not do that. Um, and having that relationship, like it respect, which we've we've learned through through time, yeah. just to be like when you know when it's a hard no or when's the veto and when's to say yeah, okay, got it. That makes the most sense. Yeah, um, for for the business moving forward. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, when did you know that? You wanted to, you know, be in that position. Like I already, I kind of asked you that question, but also when did you know that you wanted to like start growing the business and, and how, how did you come out with that, come up with that idea or how did, when did that idea makes the most sense for you, um, rather than just staying where you were? Sure. Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think that I always had this idea of something bigger. Um, I have you know, my education degree, I'm a teacher type of person. I always wanted to be in a position where I was like a teacher to people or a coach to people or some kind of like support to people. Um, and originally when we first started real estate together, we were at your dad's brokerage, right? Which was a perfect situation for us to come in and say, hey, let's partner with your dad on this brokerage and we can build the brokerage, right? And then like, things happen and that didn't work out exactly the way that we had envisioned. But really in my heart, I always thought like, it would be really cool to have a group of people doing this and we can teach them and we can teach them how to be good stewards of this trade. And we can teach them how to make a lot of money and have like the, you know, financial successes that we're having. So it was always like in my heart and in my mind. And I think when, the brokerage route didn't work out exactly the way that we had planned. The, the team route was a natural progression. And it just so happened that there was so much more team activity building up in the real estate industry too. So we were kind of just on trend. Um, so, I mean, I, I hope that answers your question, but really I think that's how we grew into the team. And out of necessity, like 
if we want to grow, if we want to do more transactions, either we have to work more hours or we have to bring people in to have their hours, right? Like include their hours and our hours. Like the more people, the more hours of work gets done, the more people we can serve and the more money we can all make. So. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that makes sense. So it's like, that was a progression. Yeah. So it was like from taking out, understanding what we do, learning how to do it from there, it's just, and then sharing that information, having an open mindset, yeah. like we want, wanted to share, wanted to help other people grow their business, um, wanting to go into growing a business. Some, not everybody wants to do that. Um, yeah. And instead of just growing our individual businesses. Yeah. That makes sense. And then how, yeah. I guess, how have, how have, have things changed? I mean, I know how, how things change for me, but for you, how have things changed personally, uh, as well as professionally in terms of goals and goal setting for what you're looking to accomplish in the future, what you want, um, from when you started, you know, let's imagine from when we, when we first started in real estate to where we are now and how have you, how have your, your individual goals changed? Sure. Well, I would say, you know, I come from a more humble beginnings, right? And like, I'm not saying that that narrows my vision, like field of vision, but I, I feel like the bar for what I expected of myself was lower because I can do without, right? Like I could do without, I could do with less. Um, and I think just over the years and having attended like all of these great seminars and conferences and having coaching around mindset and like being a proxy to you as well, who has this like this abundant mindset of like, you can accomplish whatever, right? Um, I wasn't naturally inclined to be that way. That's not like how I normally am. Um, but just over the years of being exposed to that and being in the room with people who were doing like such big things um, has really opened up my eyes and opened up my perspective to say, if I want it, I can have more. Like I don't have to, like everybody doesn't have to have more, but if I want it, I can have it. And that was a big deal for me because I'm more of like, I tend to be more of like a um, reserved person in that regard or a little fearful or um, like a narrower mindset around that kind of stuff. Like, like I said, more of like, well, I can do, I can do without, like I can do with less. I can, which is like cool to have and know like at the end of the day, I'm always going to be okay, but it doesn't really lend itself to like the forward motion and momentum and big action and I've just kind of like learned to let go with some of that stuff and embrace the possibility. Cool. Yeah. And it kind of leads me to my next question is like, why? Wait, why did like, well, why do you want it? Do you, what, like, how have you changed what you wanted? Right. Sometimes we can kind of feel like that's like a selfish thing. Like we're like, a, you know, we, we want more in life. Like we, or we want more material things or we want, we want um more right you said you came from a humble humble beginnings and you're like well i can do with less and so i don't have to necessarily work hard for that or i don't know not that i don't have to work hard for that i just don't need more but like but you know we get it you get up every day and you're, you're driven by something uh um, yeah and so like obviously you know financially things have changed somewhat for you i mean gosh for yeah. Not completely. I mean, but not a little bit, right? But um I'd say a lot of it. Yeah. I mean But why? Why I mean why why what drives you? And how do you and how do you see that? Like how do you see that um going forward? Why why do you keep doing this? Yeah, I think uh I mean just to be perfectly honest, like I want the nice stuff. I want to be able to go into a place and go shopping and not have to go to the clearance rack, right? Like I do, I do go there first to see if there's any great deals because I love a deal, but I also love to shop and, and I want to buy things and I don't not feel guilty about spending my money because I worked really hard for it and I, I have enough of it, right? I have enough um, that I can do the things that I want. It's a liberating feeling, right? We, we're, we're thrifty people, but this, the fact that I can, I have the ability is a big motivator for me, right? 
Um, the fact that I can go into the grocery store and buy all the organic produce if I want to. I do. And I, it's great. It's like a great feeling that I have the choice. And like having the option is what keeps me going. Um, having the idea that I'm not going to have to work till I'm 70 years old. I'm going to be retired and I'm going to have time to spend with my children before they're out of my house. Right. I'm going to have like lots of time with them to spend with them. I'm going to have um, time to spend with my grandkids when we get there. Like I, I have time. I'm buying my time back now. Like I'm spending the time, but I'm buying it for the future. And I know it's not very far off for me, which is really exciting. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what keeps me going. Having options for my kids, like I can send them to the schools that I want to send them. I can buy them the things that I want to buy them. I can take them on the trips that I want to take them. It's very liberating, um, you know, and I addicting. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? Yeah, it's true. It's like, it's like, well, you know, and especially start having children. If you start to understand, like, this is bigger than just me. This is, this is also providing legacy for, our, for your children and, we had a conversation recently with with a new person that's wants to join the team. I think they are joining the team now, and we were talking about you know buying investment properties for the future okay. and like how like that's cool. Like we can start off with selling real estate, and then we can buy investment properties that pay us passive income, and then those investment properties we can actually pass those down to children as our legacy. Incredible! I never thought I could, would do it. I never, I never thought about doing it. And it's like so empowering for me. And and obviously I'm doing it with you, right? Like no, I'm not solo superwoman, but it's just very empowering to have like the knowledge, the can do, the ability to be uh, working on something that's successful, to be sharing that with other people is huge for me. Again, I like I love the teaching aspect of things, the coat, like the kind of coaching dynamic I love that and sharing this information with other people and then watching them succeed is like I can't stop doing it I can't stop that right yeah yeah so Rachel I mean why why is it important for you I mean you have children um you know um to your your they're small you know spend time with them is important um, but why, why is it important for you to keep working so hard, um, and continue on? I know that's like, it's, it kind of, I know personally from, from living with you, it, you're, you're conflicted with that, right? So you want to spend time with children, but also you want to work for the future. How do you balance that? Yeah. Um, it's true, right? Like there's like, there's like that mom guilt part of it, right? Like as a working mom, uh, it's a, very much a real thing. Both of my children are in full-time preschool. Um, and I've gone back and forth a lot about should should that be the case? Should they be home with me? Should I be spending more time with them? Um, and at the end of the day, I actually think it it's better for me to be happy and feel like I'm contributing, which makes me happy and to be engaged in things that I like to do, which also makes me happy, uh, and also to show them what hard work looks like and what it means to have a little bit of sacrifice in your life and what it means to have grit and what it means to um, work really hard for something. And I feel like that's really important. And also my children, they love to go to school. Like they love school. They're social children. So I feel like um, what k keeps me going is the fact that I like it. I stayed home with Ben when he was little and I was unhappy. I thought that I would be the type of mom who would want to have children and keep them at home until they were four and send them to VPK and then on to kindergarten. And I didn't like it. I and it's wonderful and honorable and honestly staying at home is harder than going to work I don't care what anybody says it requires so much more patience and and I respect every stay-at-home mom but it was not a good fit for me I wanted to be out in the world talking to other people doing business things earning money 
I didn't want to be with my kids 24 seven with no breaks from them. I like missing them a little bit, you know? So, um, yeah, that's, that's what keeps me going. And that's what I balance. And like, I love how our coaches over the, at, um, Sims, they say like, um, it's not about balance. It's about counterbalance. As long as you're filling your cups, you're good. You could be 90% work and 10% kid. But if everybody's cup is filled, then don't worry about it, right? Like, that's not the case for me. I spend a lot of time with the kids. I drop them off at school every day. I pick them up, spend a bunch of time in the evening. And I and I'm have the ability to make my schedule. I work a lot. Like, don't get me wrong. But I make my schedule around where, when and where I want to spend with my children and my family and doing things like that. Um, and like it was pretty cool this last summer, I took the kids up to North Carolina, I rented an Airbnb on a river um, in my hometown for three weeks. Like I wouldn't be able to do that in any other situation. And we just got to go enjoy North Carolina in the summertime, which is like my favorite time of year there. And um it, it's just like, that's why I keep going because it's a different experience. I always wanted for my life something different. I just, and like, I don't even think that even needs to be defined. Like I just wanted a different experience, something that was different and unique and not just the standard every day. And I'm accomplishing that, you know? Yeah, I I agree with that. And I think that's, that makes a lot of sense. It's, to have another pursuit other other than your kids and again it's not for everybody yeah but of, out, outside of just raising children and they're young they're really young and but also have something you could be productive towards work towards a goal other than your children it's almost playing for me as your partner looking in it's like almost a long-term goal you're doing it it's the same the same pursuit but you're doing it for the long term as the example yeah for their future for for also for for their future now too or for their present now and when i'm with them like i'm not on my phone when i'm with them when i'm with them my phone is down i'm like hard to reach i don't respond to to messages until i'm back working again the next day like i when i'm with them it is quality time and that's really what makes me feel like okay and justified and that counterbalance like when i'm with them i'm all in and I'm spending quality time. They've got all my attention, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's great. I want to reiterate the fact of, you know, us growing our team, the Carol Home team to where we are now. And, and and you mentioned a lot of that was, you know, obviously your investor, you you do this, these goals are because of your relationship with me. But on the other side, and this is not for me to like, just to get sappy here, but there was no, there's no way that I could do it without you. And also just that person that's in that role of the integrator and having that right person there. It's like, if you're going to be able to run a real estate business or really any business, they're really, I think that partnership of having someone that's understands operations and people and organization is, is paramount as well to have someone who drives sales as well. And I know when we start and everybody starts at different places, you start as the, you kind of wear all the hats, especially if you're not on the team. Yeah, really, if you're not on a team, you're wearing the hat of the salesperson, the integrator, the operations person handling transactions, you're shooting photography, you're managing people, you're managing everything. And as we scale, we we have, we can divide and conquer. But again, just it wouldn't happen. There, you wouldn't see as much growth without you and you and, and someone in that position just like yourself. And so, so I mean, yeah. it's all, it's all, it's a, the mindset of sharing this and, and sharing the accolades too is is a it's just is a, just as important part of it as actually the no. actual application, right? I think for me that was 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 big because it's like it's not mine, it's not mine, it's ours, and it's really even bigger than us. It's it's our teams. Like we couldn't do it with any one person. Really couldn't do it, and it becomes more important as we start uh, getting more success and, and getting bigger too. So I want to talk with you and that leads me to my next question regarding like people and connecting with people. Like that's something that that's inherently, it's just something that you're good at. Um, And for me, it doesn't come as easy. It's just something that I've always had to work at and I continue to work at, but your connection with people and even 
referrals that come in, even working with our agents, working with the operations team. Um, it's just, just works really, really well. How did, how do you manage all that? How do you, is, is there a system around how that works for you? No, <laughs> no, I like people. Uh, honestly, um, I mean, yes and no, right? Like, but I like people and I'm, I find myself to be like a really empathetic person and a good listener. And I don't mind to take the time to listen to people. I, I'm not going to let people just drone on and on or whine at all. But I, I want to know what's going on with them. I want to hear about, you know, this thing, that thing. I want to be a problem solver, you know? And so I feel like that helps a lot in the interpersonal part of it, um, especially like that empathy piece. And I enjoy spending time talking to other people. And I think like that's definitely an element of it. Um, and, you know, just like I'm an organized person, like honestly kind of hyper, hyper organized. Like it makes me neurotic um, and I can't chill out sometimes, but um, I, that helps to right? Like just compartmentalize things and deal with different kind of people and just kind of just generally being an organized person. So, and I find that like a lot of people come to me as well, come to me with their problems or come to me as somebody like to get advice or help them with organization because of that, right? Like they know that I'm strong in that. And um, they come to me with questions. They also understand like I'm a trusted person. Like I'm empathetic. I will listen. I'm understanding. I'm kind, um, but firm. Like everybody understands where my line is and that I have one and they understand my morals are very strong. And I feel like that makes me trustworthy i'm just speculating here and i feel like that kind of lends itself to that dynamic with with people yeah and the reason why i want to highlight that is so people or audience can understand you know what does that position yeah. look like um what is you know someone in that position i'm sure it's going to be a little different for everybody but um but i think it's it's really helpful to that you you're sharing and can go over that with everybody and um, yeah, if, and again, if, if anybody wants to reach out to you, has any questions about your role in a team or your role as an integrator, as a mom, how all that works, I mean, where can they find you? Well, you can always find us on our website, www.letsselflorida.com. There is an about us section and all of our contact information is listed there. You can also get a hold of me. I'm very easily reached by text. Not so much by call because I'm on calls all the time, but uh, 772 532 2008. Um, I am proudly a somebody who will pick up a phone call, write an email back, send a text message back if you have any questions. I love working with our collaborative movement partners. Like I tell them all the time, I'm like, you got any questions? I don't care if you're on the other side of Florida, Texas, like wherever you are, if you have a question and you don't have somebody to ask it to, you can ask it to me. I'll help you find the person to answer it if I can. Like, I don't mind taking the time for people um, that way. So Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. It, it was a pleasure. Thanks for sharing with us. And uh, Welcome. yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. Bye.